one thing that I was thinking about is is that you know sometimes it seems like we go a certain you know longer than normal between certain between pullbacks in the asset class, and I thought it might be useful to illustrate that with a chart. And so we just added this chart to the website, and what it does is it, it basically just shows us the number of days since a certain certain percentage decline. Now, before we get into this chart, I will say it only cares about daily closes. So for instance, if you were to look at the price chart of Bitcoin, you may notice that recently we had a 10% decline. We just had one, literally yesterday, okay? So when we look at the chart though, it'll say, no, it's been 141 days since we've had a 10% correction. So how can that be? The chart that we're going to look at, and I just I need to explain it so that you understand the methodology behind it. If we don't understand the methodology, then it's basically pointless. It does not concern itself with wicks, okay? So the chart that we're going to be discussing is only concerned with daily closes. And when you look at daily closes, this was not a 10% correction. It was just a four to five percent correction. This move over here was about a seven percent correction. Right? This drop right here was about a 5% correction. So you can see there haven't really been any 10% corrections recently unless you look at Wix. But you guys know me. I don't care about Wix. Right? I don't really care that much about them. Most people will analyze these Wix forever. But the truth is, is almost no one actually buy those Wix or sell those Wix. They happen like that and they're gone. We care. I care about daily closes. So this chart is showing the number of days since Bitcoin had a 10% decline. The number of days, okay? And what's interesting is that we're currently on day 141. It has been 141 days since Bitcoin declined by 10% when only looking at daily closes. The, the highest value before this in recent, you know, at least in this recent cycle, took place in March and it reached about day 105 before it finally had a 10% correction. Before that, you can see that in 2019, it went up to 124 days before a 10% correction. The last time we went this long without a 10% correction measured by daily closes was all the way back in late 2016, early 2017. So it's been about six to seven years, right? I mean, that was the I guess the end of 2016, so at the very beginning of 2017, and it's now 2024. So you're talking about seven years since it's been the you know since since the the last time we went this long without a 10% correction um, measured from from daily closes. Okay, um, which is interesting, right? It's interesting, and you can see there's a, a couple of those over a few of those over here where you know it would spike up and then come back down. So this is a pretty long streak that we are experiencing. 141 days. Now, 10% corrections, while they're interesting, think about, let's be honest, no one really cares about a 10% correction here. You know, I mean, you could wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin could be down 10% and they could be back to the open by, by lunchtime. So a lot of people don't care about 10%. So we're going to look at, at larger corrections. Now, it might be a little confusing, but I'll, I'll try to explain it. So let's look at a 20% correction. It's been 116 days since a 20% correction. Now, how can that be? Because we just looked at this and we had a 10% correction 141 days ago. So the way that it works, if you, if you think about it, when you think about when this reset, it reset in August to have a 10% correction. Because if you go back and you look at August from this move here until August, right? I mean, you can see that, that right there, Bitcoin had a 10% correction. So then it reset it reset the clock on this chart in August, right? It reset the it reset the clock. But Bitcoin did not reach 20% down until September. So when you look at this chart for a 20% correction, we know the chart did not get reset for that until September, right? Which is why it's it's been a shorter period of time is because it took it longer to get you know to, to get that drawdown in the first place. So when we think about the number of days since a 20% correction, it's been about 116. Before that, 
we had gone all the way up to 305, which was quite a long period of time. You can see that it was actually near the, the, the January 2021 peak in terms of the amount of time it took. Kind of an eerie similarity, right? You know, going up all the way um, and coming back down and then, and then maybe getting another pop up here. But let's, let's expand this. What I find absolutely fascinating, and a lot of people don't believe it until you actually really look at the chart, is that what if you up this to 25%? Look at this. Can this be right? Right? 422 days. 422 days since Bitcoin has had a 25% correction. I said this is not possible, right? Is it because we're ignoring the wicks? We are ignoring the wicks, but that's not why. Even if you include the wicks, Bitcoin did not have a single 25% correction in 2023. Not a single one. All these were about 20, 21, 22% corrections. So the last time that Bitcoin had a 25% correction was all the way back over here when FTX collapsed. This is the longest time Bitcoin has gone in its entire history without having a 25% drop. The highest streak we had had before was 348 days. Basically, if you're if you're unfamiliar with the way this chart works, it, it, you know every day that goes by, it just goes up by one. The count goes up by one until you get that correction, and then it, and then it collapses to zero. Day 422 of no 25% drops by Bitcoin. What about 30% drops? Now that's one that's interesting because now you can see we are at day 422. The highest it's ever gone was day was 420, 430, 430. So a little over a week from now would basically set a new record if there's still not a 30% correction kind of interesting to think about right it shows you it shows you you know how long it's been right and this is why the market can be hard it can be challenging is because we can go very long times without a correction and we go so long in fact that it think you know a lot of people think there'll never be one you know they'll, they'll think there's never going to be another major correction and then once everyone thinks that then you actually get a a, a larger drop and you know people think that that bid's going to come and then it just keeps on dropping more than they've seen in recent memory. I mean, we literally did not even have a 25% correction in 2023. We can expand this. We can go look at 40%. I think 40% is interesting. 40% shows we're currently at day 422. This top over here, 432. There was one move over here, though, in 27, uh, you know, that topped out in 2018 that didn't, I mean, it went over 1,100 days before we even had a 40% drop. It's the only one, it's the only outlier because all the others have more or less topped out somewhere between you know 300 to 500 or so. What about a 50% drop? 50% drop, day 422. Top over here in June was about you know, 400 in the 460s. This one was in the 470s, 480s. This one over here was in the 500s. This one is the only one that goes over 1,100 days. We can also look at a 60% correction and see. Day 572 since a 60% correction. So you can see that you know over here in 2019, we went about, what, a little less than 500 days before we got that 60% drop from, the, from that reference point. I like the way that these, you know, I, I like the, the visualization of, of this sort of chart because it, it just kind of shows me, you know, are we in uncharted territory or are we not, right? In terms of 60% declines, this is not really uncharted territory. In terms of 10% declines, it's getting pretty extended. I mean, it doesn't mean we can't go another week or two, right? Of course. Everyone's talking about the spot ETF and whatnot. But I have to imagine that sometime in the next few weeks, we'll probably get a 10% correction, right? I mean, this is, again, it's been about four, four to five months. 
And normally, you don't really go more than four to five months without a, a more durable 10% correction that doesn't just get eaten up on a single wick. And then you look at 30% corrections, and I'm like, yeah, it's getting kind of extended too. I'm not saying it can't go higher. And in fact, I mean, looking at what happened in 2016, if you had assumed that in 2021 it would it would top out at you know day 340 or something you know you would have still seen it not cave for a couple more months right so that's one aspect to to consider but just remember that if if you're feeling the fomo right if you're feeling that if you're feeling like you know like you just want to do some make some really ris risky moves just know that we haven't had a large correction in a while, and that is the reason why you're feeling that. It's because, you know, Bitcoin has has just sort of slowly grinded here for for a long time, and it hasn't really seen any type of, of larger correction in in over a year. So I thought this was a useful chart to, to, to present. I hope you guys enjoyed it.